was it kind of like a rite of passage for some of the Australian artists to have some kind of uh, have their best work shown in galleries in England or Paris or things like that? Because I imagine that would be a great goal of theirs, but it must have had a great impact back home as well. I mean, much like music and film, but no one seems to get that kind of recognition. Yes, certainly, and um, long staff went over, um, and Lady <laughs> Gray um, hang, hung in cellars over there, um, and that was a huge room for John Longstar. Um, he was very much a sort of um, outgoing personality, just a strapping man, and um, you know, a bit of a looker. And then here he was in Paris, young artist, he was getting a vibe, really, really great to be in working in Paris at the time. And, um, and our beautiful Chelsea here in the photo, um, his, his lovely wife. She, yeah, it was an interesting thing. So he used to do a photo gigging lifestyle. She was not a fan of the Lugo scene. She was not a fan of the whole art scene, um, and particularly the French art scene. There was, um, I think, one moment in one of the uh, letters or, or this uh, a record of her complaining that Longstar was starting to wear his beard like a Frenchman. She was, she refused to learn French. She, she really left the apartment. So uh, she's actually a really interesting character. Besides being incredibly beautiful. Um, she was really quite shy of his outgoing personality. Uh, I love that she remained as amused though, you know, like, it was kind of like, I'm not leaving the apartment in France, I'm not getting involved in this French culture. I don't know why anyone would do that, but you know what I mean? But the fact that he was like, that he really liked her and continued to paint her and things like that. It kind of says a lot about love and how whatever she wanted to do, or whatever she was against, he was still like, like you're amazing. You know? Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, you know, so they had an interesting and sometimes, I guess, difficult relationship. There's, um, again, the uh, time they went to visit uh, Russell, who uh, lived on an island as well, he was an Australian. And, uh, Russell? John Peter Russell. So he, he did paint her rock, and he, um, uh, and, and then probably Australia's um, impressionist, he was quite a French term, impressionist. Um, and so, uh, Topsy and John, one star, who got to see um, Russell and Jane. French wife Mary Ann on the island. Um, and it turned out they had a bit of an argument between the two ladies, and they had to go stay elsewhere for a few months instead. So, um, so it, was, it was a hard time, I think, in their relationship of trying to, to work out a, a manageable uh, work between their personalities. And, and you know, it was a time when he as an artist would have been definitely a friend in the family. So, um, being in Paris and, and around that time and, and making his name for the arts was really crucial. Do you know if he was making some of his best work at his time overseas, or was he simply travelling um, and gaining inspiration? Do you know if he, some of his best work was done over there when he was there? I guess, I mean, this is as a portrait, um, it's just a, a, it's a really interesting one with John Longstaff's. Um, so this was painted in Paris? Yes, it is. So, and just, I just wrote that. <laughs> uh, and it's interesting because it actually very much draws on what was happening there. I mean, this, a few of you who are aware of uh, Whistler's portrait of my mother. You can see this sort of iconic picture. It's the black and white by the, um, of the woman with the, uh, the woman. This, this sort of draws across this really kind of iconic imagery that the artists were looking at at the time. And so, um, so this is this probably one of his more stylized. Um, he draws on really kind of trendy things at the time, like and you know, the influence of the East and uh, the influence of Japan here, the bands, the, the kimono. Um, this really is a soft, subdued colour palette. Because I look this up in English, this is a really, it draws heavily from the guy James McNeil Whistler. And I was, I was thinking, was imitating guys like Whistler, but obviously Whitler was uh, on the poles, and was imitating someone like him um, acceptable at the time? Because I'm thinking of all forms of art, but you know. Was it something that was kind of considered like someone is at the forefront of the artistic kind of movement at the time, and so it's okay for us all to imitate exactly what they're doing? And I was thinking, this is a portrait, so like all times, you know, people were commissioning portraits to be done. So was it was it more a case of people, or rich people, saying, "Come and paint my portrait, and I want it done just like Whistler"? Is that what it was? To some extent, uh, I guess the copying of artworks. I mean, there's this whole history. A lot of these art students that didn't win these scholarships are actually going overseas. And part of the, the scholarship was that they had to paint um, copies of artworks to bring back to Australia. For all those Australians who paint around overseas. So um, that's why we find so many copies of artworks in, in the collection um, by Australian artists that paint works on the Lapskers and the Murrellas.
Um, this in particular, I guess this is interesting in that um, so Whistler painted his portrait of his mother um, uh, about 20 years before this work was done. So while well, Whistler uh, was, was doing something quite innovative, by this stage there were a lot of other artists who said, okay, this guy knows what he's doing, let's try and, and, and play with that idea. And I guess that's just creativity, the nature of creativity. There's, there's innovation, and everyone starts playing with that innovation to see where they go, and so where it goes, and how they can make an impact on that process as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like music, you know, like, you know there's a certain kind of trend at the time, and there's something that just, it's not, well, it's not trendy, it's just something that resonates with you, and so all the people are just like, yeah, I'm going to use some of that, and I'm going to put my own slant on it, so I understand that, it's very cool. I was going to say, in this, she's wearing a kimono, and I was going to say, well, I looked at this, I looked at this painting up, but I was wondering, as I said, I was looking at the Japanese influence on the, uh, on the paintings. And I was just thinking, was Japanese influence uh, unique, or was there like all kinds of uh, Eastern uh, influences happening in, in European art at the time? Or was there something about Japanese art that was making its way into the great art at the time? Or was it just like all artists were traveling and they were taking it whatever they could or was there certain cultures that were fashionable where they would with European art like what we're looking at and yet they would introduce something Japanese in art because that was the thing. Certainly um, with the Japanese it was these woodcut prints and, and uh, Japanese in particular the Japanese art was resonating quite strongly so woodcut prints. There were woodcut prints and I think um, uh, Van Gogh was quite interested in them. Uh, Russell again, I'll come back to him, um, had numerous, numerous uh, of these prints in, in his home. Um, a, a lot of artists were playing with this idea, and it's not just, like, I guess it's maybe that interest in another culture and then being able to access that. So, certainly a little bit later, this Gauguin goes off to um, uh, the islands. <laughs> um, to, sorry? Tahiti, of course. <laughs> um, so he's, so he's gone off to, to hit the influence there. Um, and people are just trying to, I just find new ways of, um, you know, I guess this is globalisation at the very early stage of these last days. At the same time, uh, um, long stuff here is not introducing Japanese art into his art or Japanese style of art. He's just simply put his wife into a kimono and just, it, like, just basically shown that he's travelled there and is intrigued by it. So it's kind of like, it's, it's not like there's anything um, like overtly about Japanese art or the way they were painting pictures at the time that's come into its work. It's more just like the artists at the time were saying, I've been around the world and I've taken in certain, you know, parts of culture and they were kind of happy to show it off. I guess that's it. All of a sudden, sort of, yeah, showing, showing that you were sort of knowledge and you knew what was going on, you knew where the flag was at, and you knew where the flag was at, and all this um, I guess interesting. And, and, and a lot of the, his peers at that time would be complaining to those guys, it's definitely it. Is this the only painting that Lobby did of his wife, Topsy? Do you know? Is this, is this the one? Because she's a terrifying image. Yeah, she's quite 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 a terrifying image.
I just said my easy for me, and I was just thinking, man, no one knows about this woman in my generation. <laughs> it would be the most amazing film. I was just like, I was just reading, that was the most fascinating thing about this whole thing. I was just like, Dame Nellie Nova, what a woman. Just told me to be there. There's, um, yeah, towards Yarra Valley, there's probably out there that has, um, yeah, a huge, uh, that was probably out there, but, um, the main thing is there's a winery attached. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's right. Well, anyway, today's basic subject is the first time we're discussing the general feeling of love, the theme for today's The Loved One, and I've Include in Adelita today, who's our musical guest. She's going to come and play a few songs with me. I'm going to discuss love songs, creativity with her, and we're just going to basically let it flow. So we started today with Mom Tough here, painting his wife. Um, very beautiful. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're going to make some links between the two and talk about love and creativity with Adelita. So we'll be in the next room in 10 minutes. Thank you.